Hello, welcome to the HVMFC YouTube channel. What I would like for you to do is like and subscribe. Have a blessed day. Coming up on the Inspired Word. Can you push that? Who push the separation between you and Satan is Jesus. That's what our God is good for. That's what He does. Can the very, very person can not allow uh, uh, you to be had by Him is our Lord. And we've got to get that on the inside of us. So since we know okay, he has this dominion and, and, and he's this, this spiritual being that has all these natural abilities or these abilities that are so greater than ours. Okay. Our hero has to show up. Our, our hero has to be there. And so that simply means we must be with our hero. We must be with our Lord. We, we must know that he's on our side. Okay. We must have faith in him that he's the defender. And so just because we're going through something doesn't mean he's not there. Village family, Pastor Charles here, with a quick reminder of our mission, which is to seek the lost, teach the found, and send the disciples. To continue to reach our community and people all around the world, I invite you to join us by financially partnering with us on our mission. To do so, go to www.harvestvillage.org slash give. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Harvest Village Online. I'm Pastor Charles Miles, and I have an awesome message for you today. So get your Bibles, your pencil, paper, your notepads, as we get ready to get started. Today we're going to pick up in the series Ready to Fight, and today's topic is evil is stalking me. And you guys, you, um, woohoo, I got something lined up for you today. I don't even know how to begin, man. I'm so excited about what I'm getting ready to talk to you about. But we're going to pick up right away in Luke 22. So Luke chapter 22, we'll pick up in verse 31, so I'll give you a chance to get your Bibles there. Family, I want to tell you, man, I've been going through some stuff recently where the Lord has really been just revealing some things to me. He's been giving me more clarity and more understanding. And he's giving me this, this great understanding of how Satan continuously, continuously tries to just track us down. Continue, continuously tries to, you know, uh, come after us, the, the way he comes after us and the, the way he just, you know, wants to oppress us. Remember, we as Christians, we can't really, you know, be overtaken by him or consumed by him, so to speak, because we are in filled with the Holy Spirit. But that does not stop the devil from oppressing us. And what I simply mean by that, he gives us these thoughts, these ideas and suggestions. And when they bombard our mind, what they tend to do is put us in a position, especially when we're not strong enough, to, you know, it puts us in that position where we don't feel like we can move forward or, you know, we're so broken down. You know, sometimes we, we're depressed. We're, we're, we're in, in a place where we feel like we can't move forward in any area of our lives. And so today, where I'm getting ready to pick up here is in Luke. Luke chapter 22. And let me give you this thought process because Jesus is sitting down with his disciples and he's going through the Last Supper. So if you don't know what the Last Supper is, this is basically the last time that he was able to dine with his disciples. Okay, it was that last dinner before he was getting ready to be put to death. And I'm giving you this thought process here because after they eat dinner, they go through this and they're, they're talking about who is the greatest. The disciples are talking about who is going to be the greatest amongst them, right? They're having this kind of this conversation. And it wasn't the greatest of conversations, but this is what's going on. But Jesus, kind of out of nowhere, he picks up and this is exactly what he says to Peter. So this is where verse 31 picks up. He says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demands to have you, okay, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. As I was going through this, this scripture and I was going through some of the things, you know, looking at the fullness of it, I mean, going back and doing some of my study on it, it's something when you look at it. Because when you really understand it, 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 the you he's talking about here, the word you, when he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demand to have you, that you is actually plural. What that simply means, Jesus was not just talking to Peter at this point. He actually was talking to all the disciples. And when he says that he might sift you, that was also plural. So it, it, it more reads like this right here. Simon, Simon, pay attention. Satan has the man to permission to have all of you for himself. 
to sift you like wheat. Now let's talk about this for a moment. Because a lot of times when we read this, we think he's referring to Peter when Jesus is talking. He's referring to Peter, but he's also referring to all of the disciples. And that's what's missed. Now, think about this for a moment. It says that he might sift you like wheat. Now, you have to really take this in and look at the old times of how wheat was sifted. Okay, wheat, to separate the, the kernel or the grain from, from the shaft, okay, you know, wheat was sifted hard. I mean, like, you guys like, man, I mean, really sifted. You know, they put them in the, those little, I want to say meals that they had or those little things they would have, like screens, where they would sift them. But they had to press hard to separate the wheat, okay, from the shaft. You know, so it, it was a hard thing. So when you think, think about this right here, Satan, Okay, to, to, for Satan to come in, okay, want to sift you like wheat. He's trying to, you know, separate us. Let's see what's real about you. Let's see what good you have in you. Matter of fact, can you can you pass the test, okay, or pass the trials and tribulations that I'm going to put upon you? Let's see how strong your faith is. That's what we're getting to right now. So Satan is wanting to sift all the disciples, okay, because he wants to see how strong their faith is. Will they stand the test of time? Okay, will, will they stand under this hardship? Will they stand when they have to go through the fires? Will they have to go through the hardships when, they, when they're, they're wrecked? Will, will they stand in, in their faith regarding you, Jesus? Will they love you, God? Stand Still, okay, when they have to go through all this hardship. And it's something because if we know it's for all the disciples, it's also for us. And I want to get that over this morning because when we start reading some of these scriptures, guys, start understanding this, Satan is always on our butts. As a matter of fact, I want to read this, this same scripture, but I'm going to read to you uh, from a Greek in your Bible. And so this is the, the month's Greek translation, okay? So Muncie Greek translation speaks. It says, Simon, Simon, pay attention. Satan has demanded permission to have all of you for himself, to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have returned, strengthen your brothers. Check this out. The last portion of that scripture is very important. Okay, says, and when you have returned, this is Jesus talking to Peter right now. Now, this portion is personal to Peter. It says, and when you have returned, simply meaning Jesus knew that Peter was going to fall short. He absolutely didn't knew that Peter was going to fall short. And, and because of that, he says, when you have returned, because sometimes we fall. We talked about it a few weeks ago. Sometimes we're going to fail. Sometimes we're going to have things in our lives, you know, where, where, where we did, we missed the mark. Okay, well, we got to get ourselves back up and return back into the place and the position we're supposed to be. As a matter of fact, Jesus knew this so strongly concerning Peter. He says, and when you have returned, go back to strengthen your brothers. So this is the same way that we have to be in our lives, okay? So we're not supposed to stop falling. We're not supposed to stay in that broken place. No, we must return to the place we're supposed to be with our God, okay, and move forward. Now, some of us guys, you know, it, it feels like in our lives we've been sifted, and we could continually sifted, right? You know, where's that scripture it's supposed to be from glory to glory, from victory to victory? Where has that been in my life? You know, mighty God, why, why I feel like I haven't experienced this. Why have I feel like my entire life I've been sifted like we, right? But that's one of God's development processes here. Okay, when God is developing us and he's making us stronger, yes, he's going to sift off the chaff. Okay, he's going to make sure that, you know, the things that we don't need going forward, he needs to get rid of. And that's how I look at the scripture also. See, when, when we're being sifted, when we're going through the, the trials and tribulations and we're going through that hard time when things that we don't need on us can be, need to be burnt off of us, see, that's when Satan comes in and that's how the trials and tribulations a lot of times come to us. Okay, it's okay that these things happen in our lives. Why? Because we need to withstand and we need to go through them to get to the other side. That's how we become better. That's how we become stronger. That's how we move to the next level with our Lord. Amen? It's something because when Jesus was talking to Peter and to the rest of the disciples right here, he didn't try to stop it from going on. Think about that for a moment. Okay, Jesus didn't pray for this to stop right here. He didn't say, no, Satan, you can't have him. He didn't rebuke him. Okay, he didn't stop none of that. So sometimes the things that you're going through, God's allowing it because he knows it's going to make you better. He knows it's for you to become greater. He knows these trials make you more whole, okay, more healthier, more stronger in everything you do. It's something. Guys, look at David just for a moment. When David was out there tending them sheep when he was a young teenager, okay, young boy, so to speak, you know, it's somehow the lion and the bears will come in. And God never stopped the lions and bears from coming in, even though God is God of all things. Okay, he didn't stop them from coming after David. What he did was he strengthened David to overcome them lions and bears that were coming after him while he was watching those sheep. And I want to give you that thought process right now because even when you think about Goliath, okay, he didn't stop Goliath from coming after David. Even though Goliath, like, who are you in front of me? You know, get this kid out of the way. Matter of fact, kid, you keep talking, you know, I'm going to deal with you right now. 
he did not stop Goliath from coming towards David. Okay, and he did not stop Goliath from coming towards David. Okay, he's not going to stop your Goliath, your giant, from coming towards you sometimes. And what that simply means is if God is allowing it to take place, if he's allowing it to move forward in your life, that's not to defeat you, that's not to kill you, that's not to destroy you, that's not to make you shameful, hurtful, that, that's not to make any of those things take place in your life. God is right now, he's wanting you to step up. Stand out and move forward in your life. He wants you to overcome the giant that's before you. Okay, you got to climb that mountain. Okay, you can't drown in that ocean right now. No, you got to become greater than you've ever been. And that's how he wants us to see these things in our lives, family. Because so many times we cry over the trials and tribulations, and I've been there so many times in my life too. So let me be the first to say, I, I, I get it. At the same time, God is saying, get your butt up. You know, I understand you got tears in your eyes right now, but I want you to understand you need to move forward. And don't be scared of what's before you. Because if I allowed it to come your way, it's meant for a greater cause than you may know at this time. But because you may not always know what that cause is, can you, you tend to think it's supposed to overcome you. It's supposed to defeat you. Never that. Never for a child of God. Because scripture tells us, right, no temptation has overcome you, but such is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above your ability. And in his faithfulness, he will allow a way of escape so that you can bear it. That simply means right now, guys, okay, if God's allowing something to come your way, he's going to give you what you need. Okay, to get out of that. He's going to give you what you need to overcome that. Okay, whatever the situation is, whether it's health, relationships, whether it's something you know, internal that you're dealing with, whatever it may be, whatever that giant is in your life. See, a lot of times we face Goliaths in different areas of our lives, at different seasons of our lives. We all have our Goliaths. We all have things that we have to overcome. We all have different mountains in which we need to climb, but we're not supposed to fear it. Okay, we have to be ready to fight, you know, and just because evil is stalking you don't mean that God has left you. And we got to get that on the inside of us, family, because when we get that and we know God is still with us, okay, what, what is this show right here, mighty God? I, I see what's going on all around me. I, I, I feel like I'm being sifted, but I know I'm not supposed to be in fear. I, I see I'm being sifted, but I know I'm not supposed to let these tears drop right now. I see I'm being sifted, but I, I'm, I'm going to fight, mighty God. I'm going to stand with you because I know I'm supposed to overcome this with you. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. You know, I had this uh, I had this dream a few days ago, and literally a few days ago, a few nights ago. And I, it must have been, guys, probably about two something in the morning, and I, I cannot forget it. And what it was, guys, remember, this is a dream. What it was in the dream, I was I was walking, but this lion, this lion was 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 following me. Big old lion, big, you know, big. Big old head, all this thing, huge lion. All right, I'm a big boy, but you know, I can't just naturally fight a lion. Let's just go in and make this play now with my bare hands. I, I'm not meant to fight a lion with my bare hands, right? And so I'm out in this desert area and I'm walking. And I say desert because it's desert, like sand everywhere, and I'm just walking. But in here, this lion is. And I'm thinking to myself, where'd this lion come from? It just showed up out of nowhere. Now, I'm also out, of, you know, in the place like nowhere because I don't know why I was in the desert. But once again, this is a dream. And so, as I'm walking, this lion was slowly but surely getting closer to me. Now, I don't, no matter what I did, I couldn't outrun him. Of course, I couldn't naturally outrun a, a lion, you know, but I, I couldn't outrun him. I, I couldn't get rid of him, but he was, he was trailing me. And as, some, as he was getting closer, out of, at a little distance from me, I, I saw there was a tree. And my first thought process to myself, well, I'm going to climb that tree. But then I, it hit me like, you can't get away from a lion climbing a tree. There, there, there's no way I can, you know, I, I can get away from a lion climbing a tree. That lion can climb that tree way better than I can, right? So I said, don't get in the tree. And, th and then it hit me while I was in the dream. What are you thinking about? If you climb that tree, you're going to trap yourself. Okay, and then that lion has you. So that's not the thing that I must do right now. Okay, I, I can't sit here and, and try to run or hide from this thing. Okay, eventually I'm going to have to face this thing because it's getting closer and closer to me. And guys, literally as I kept moving and as I kept walking, now I was not running. I should say this. There was nowhere in this dream where I was seen running. I wasn't out of breath. You know, I was just, I kept noticing this lion behind me and trailing me. So as I passed the tree up, once again, still walking, you know, every once in a while still checking to see where he was. And guys, he's got, he got real close to me. But as he got real close to me, remember, I'm in the desert. I'm saying this for a reason because this thicket all of a sudden appeared. When I say a thicket, think of uh, like this bush. And, and this bush had some kind of like netting 
on the inside of it. And as this bush with netting on the inside of it, it, it kind of just like appeared there. And as the lion was coming close to me, it appeared between me and the lion. And, and it was something because the lion got caught up in this thicket. I mean, he was so close to me, guys. It's like if he reached out, he would have got me. But, but because of this thicket, he couldn't get through it. And all of a sudden, guys, when I looked down, I had this knife in my hand. It wasn't even a sword. It was a knife. I mean, I, I know a knife when I it was a chef's knife, to be exact. So just a regular big old chef's, chef's knife, wasn't a sword at all. But sure enough, what, I took this knife, and before I knew it, I turned around, and I gave him a couple, like, mm, 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 like right into this area. I really did give him a couple, couple, couple good stabs, right? But all that did to the lion was he backed away for a moment. Okay, and, and for a second, for a little bit rather, not a second, but a little bit longer than that, he turned around and started walking the other way. And as I moved forward in the way in which I was going, I realized the lion was still behind me. I had just slowed him down for a little bit. You know, as, as I started to walk away, I couldn't see him anymore where the lion was, but I knew he was still following me. And then I woke up. Of course, immediately I, I was... Praying and ask God about that, and because it, it bothered me, like Lord, you know, uh, how how close is this lion to me? In my mind, I already knew this was Satan. This is Satan because the scripture popped into my head immediately. You know, that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. You know, it, just, it just popped in my head. I, I already knew God had given this to me for a reason because He wanted me to understand that Satan is always after you, Charles. He's always after you. He's always after Christians. He's always waiting for an opportune time to attack you. Okay, and don't you worry about when he gets closer to you because I'm going to always be there to put something in between the middle of him and you. Okay, our, our Lord came here for that, right? He came to destroy the works of Satan. And when we start really thinking about that, just because he looks as close as he is to you, just because you're going through all these trials and tribulations, don't mean that I'm not with you. Okay, I've given you my word. I've given you something to fight with. And don't you ever, you never have to be sorry or feel saddened about the things that you see around you because you know that I have you. And guys, it, it meant so much to me because I've been going through so much this, this last, you know, I want to say few months. I would love to even say this year, but this last few months have kind of blown me away with everything that's going on in my life. And, every, you know, and all these external things coming after me and my family and the way it's been hitting us. You know, I've been taking those right and, and lefts. It's like Tyson's in the ring with me or something. I've been getting hit so hard, right? But it, it, it's something because I've seen, you know, I've seen it. When, 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 when that lion got so close to me, how the Lord put a separation between me, okay, and the evil one. And, and so today when I was talking about the evil was stalking me, evil stalks all of us. It stalks all of us. The key is to understand that it cannot have us. Okay, when we say with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God's going to always put a separation between his people, okay, and Satan. Cool. So even though the devil looks close to us, even though he, he stalks around like, a, like a, a, a roaring lion, as a matter of fact, 1 Peter 5 8 says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Okay, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Isn't that something? Because it's exactly what he was doing. And even in the dream, as I kept looking back, I was watchful to see how close he was to me. And even though I kept around him, it's, it's something because he... In a dream, I knew this lion was powerful. Okay, I knew I could not naturally defeat this lion. And I'm going to explain this in a moment. I also knew that if I run, he was faster than me. Okay, I knew I could not naturally get away from this lion. Okay, up that tree wasn't an exit for me. Matter of fact, that tree was a trap to me. Because see, sometimes what we think is an exit is actually a trap. We just didn't see it that way. And a lot of times in our lives, we've got to be so careful. We think that exit or, or this area right here or this thing that we're going into, that's actually a trap to trap you. Okay, that's the very thing he needs you to walk into so you can't get away from. Okay, it's the key to stay on the path, the key to stay with the Lord. And we have to see things like this. We have to ask God for the wisdom. Guys, because sometimes we just don't know. Lord, give me the wisdom to understand, okay, what's the trap, okay, and what's the direction in which I need to go. Because sometimes things look good. Because that tree, for a moment, it looked real good to me. Because for a moment, I thought in the dream, and I thought of it, guys. I remembered so distinctly. I thought, oh, this is going to get me away from him. Then it finally hit me. Oh, my goodness, Charles, you got no sense at all. Okay, this lion can crack, climb that tree better than you can. See, it's something when you think about a lion, guys. When you think about land mammals, which we also are a mammal. But think about this right here. We don't have a lot of natural defenses against land animals. 
Okay, actual animals. When we start thinking about these bigger animals out there right there, we, you know, this lion, you know, got three, four inch teeth in his mouth. You know, you know, he got all these, these claws, sharp as razors. He got four, five, six hundred pounds of them. They're strong as they can be. But they're meant to survive out in the wilderness, in those you know, wilderness areas. We're not meant to survive like that. Okay, we're, we're, we're not ordained, so to speak, with a lot of natural defenses. Okay, we may be strong, have muscles and things of that nature, but outside of our mind, we don't have natural defenses. Now, the natural defenses we do have is our mind. Okay, we can make things up that can destroy that lion in seconds. I, I get that. But in his dream, I was without any of those things. I, I could There was no guns for me to have. There, there, there was no, nothing I could shoot at this lion. I, so I was out there. My natural abilities against his natural abilities. And what God was trying to get me to understand, see, you against Satan on your own, you're nothing. You're nothing. You, you don't have the ability to destroy Satan. We, we don't have that, guys. We don't have the power over Satan. Guys, we must remember, okay, the power of our enemies. We must remember the power that Satan has impressed upon him. See, what Satan is missing right now is the glory of God. But he still has all the gifts, all the power that God has given him. Okay, we as humans, we, don't, we are no match on our own for Satan. So what had to happen at that moment in which he got, got real close to me was God put the separation in place and he, gave, he gave, gave me something to fight with. See, I can't defeat Satan. Matter of fact, I'm not even called to defeat Satan necessarily. Okay, Jesus is called to, to end his reign fully, right? We know that because we know the end of the book and we got to make sure we realize that. But what I do have on my side is my Lord and Savior. And my Lord and Savior, when I call upon his name, he's going to put whatever he needs to put in place to make sure there's always distance between me, okay, and the evil one. So as long as the evil one is going to keep stalking me, he's going to keep putting something in place to separate us. See, that's why David said, in the 23rd Psalms. Okay, when you look at the 23rd Psalms, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For my God is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. So it's something because, see, David's going through this valley, going through this tough predicament, going through this tough place, right? He says, I I'm, I'm walking. I'm not running. The reason I'm not running because, see, I got nothing to run from. Okay, I don't need to run from what's behind me. I don't need to run from what seems like death is around me. No, 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 no. I know who my protector is. I know who he truly loves me. I know who's not going to leave me in my worst of moments. I know because he promised me. And because he promised me and because he did these things before me, he has shown me who he is. And because he has shown me who, I, who, who he is, I, I understand that he's going to be my defender. He's been my protector before. He's going to be my protector now. Okay, he, he's loved me before. He's going to love me now. So no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to just keep moving the way the Lord wants me to move. I don't have to run from my enemies. As a matter of fact, when you get to the other side of this right here, when you get to the other portion of the 23rd Psalms, when David is sitting there, he said, my enemies see me being blessed. My, my enemies see me, the, the anointing running over me. I'm not hiding from them. Matter of fact, God is showing me off. Okay, okay, look how my man has fed, uh, 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 stood fast. Look, look how my man is doing. Okay, you, you, he's not running from you. He's not running from you. Okay, and that's such a blessing, guys. When we really start thinking about this right here, you know, huh, we were never meant to run from evil. Not with the protector we have in place. Matter of fact, we got to be so careful because a lot of times when we're running, we're truthfully in fear. And if we're in fear, who are we giving power? It's just like when I was a little kid. Guys, listen, we used to have all these dogs. When I was young, you know, there wasn't all these rules about dogs. You know, they have to be on leashes. They have to none of that crap. They, a dog, you can have a pet bull in the front yard, no gate, laying on the grass right there. You know, when I was a little kid, I see a pet bar, a pet, uh, a pet bull, a big old pet bull laying in the front yard. Okay, you know, with no leash on, no nothing. Guess what I'm doing? I'm walking the other way. I don't care if my house is three houses over. I'm walking around the corner, this way, that way, that way, and coming back to my house the other way. But I'm definitely not going to cross that pet bull's path. Right? I, I, I got bit a couple times, family. You know, and so I, I don't like being bit. Okay, I can't run from that dog. But I was looking at that dog's way faster than me. Okay, I ain't got the mouth that dog got on it. Some of the pet bulls, man, they just don't let go when they bite. Right? And, and so it was something. When I think about that right there, you know, I, I was in fear. I was in complete fear of that dog. So I wouldn't cross that path. But it's something. When you think about Satan and the power that, and the abilities that he have, where are you going to run to? Okay, there's, around the corner, he's there. He's there. He's there. He's everywhere. Okay, who puts, that, who puts the separation between you and Satan is Jesus. That's what our God is good for. That's what he does. 
Okay, the very, very person okay, not allowing uh, uh, you to be had by him is our Lord. And we've got to get that on the inside of us. So since we know okay, he has this dominion and, and, and he's this, this spiritual being that has all these natural abilities or these abilities that are so greater than ours. Okay. Our hero has to show up. Our, our hero has to be there. And so that simply means we must be with our hero. We must be with our Lord. We, we must know that he's on our side. Okay, we must have faith in him, that he's the defender. And so just because we're going through something doesn't mean he's not there. And that's what that showed me, that dream. That's what God was trying to get me to understand. Charles, that all these things that you're going through and all the, the things that you have to deal with these last few months, understand, I, I get Satan is on your butt. I, I get he's right next to you, it seems like, sometimes. But I want you to understand, I'm still putting separation in place between you and him. And family, that's what he's trying to tell you right now through me today. Because when I was asking about this, Lord, should I talk about this? Should I, should I talk to the people about this right here? Because sometimes my personal stuff is just my personal stuff, right? But I'm looking at I couldn't even keep this away from you. Because I want you to know the love of the Lord. Okay, I want you to know how he works with us. You mean something I couldn't even think about. I mean, in the middle of the desert, okay, where is this, like, this thicket, this, this vegetation? And where did that pop up from? In the middle of the desert. Where did that tree Coming from. And so that also tells me about the tree guys that I saw. Think about this for a moment. This tree was totally great. It almost like a big old pine tree in the middle of the desert. It's something how Satan will put things in place to fool us. Right? How he put things in place to make us think to think, you know, that's the way we must go. You know, that's our way of escape. And we that it wasn't even a natural thing there. It, it, it reminded me sometimes, you know, but we gotta be so careful. When something just pops up and it looks like a way of escape or it looks like a way we can get away from something, right? It looks like, you know, we can run and be safe that way. Be so careful. Be so careful. You know, once again, that's when you have to devote your time and energy to prayer. God, is that my way out that you're providing for me or is that the trap the enemy's setting for me? So you got to remember, it wouldn't be a trap if you already knew that it was something bad with it. No, traps do what? Traps lure you in, family. See, that's why I knew that tree was a trap on the other side of it, because I understood that was a lure. It, it was the way to get me. It's like when you go fishing, right? You put those little fake fish lures on there, but the, you know, the, the, the fish don't realize there's a hook on the bottom of that, bottom of that lure. And because there's a hook on the bottom of that lure, right, it, it's just waiting for you to, to come grab, right, to, to snatch your butt up out of there, to snatch your butt up out of existence. And then unfortunately to be devoured. We have, we have to recognize that. We have to see that. And I want you guys to realize, even once again, even though you know the enemy's stalking you, he can't have you. He can't have you. And the Lord wouldn't do what he needs to do to back his butt up when he gets too close. And that's all it was. Like I said, I couldn't kill him. And you know, when that knife appeared in my hand and I gave him a few, like right to the middle of his body because his, it, it, it was his, he was literally in a position, guys, in that thicket to come like, like where, where his, his paws were coming. I could see his claws trying to come through. And so literally, guys, I just took it once again, gave him a few right to the midsection, but it only slowed him down for a moment. I knew he was still there. And it was something because I couldn't even see him, but I knew he was there. And so, man, guys, when we start, you know, looking at this topic, guys, and start thinking about, you know, how he attacks us, understand the power that you have with you when you have God with you. See, if I was by myself and God wasn't with me, I was done. I was done because in, in, in the desert with that big old lion that I saw with my natural defenses, what I'm going to do? One slice to the neck, you know, one bad bite anywhere up in this region, I'm, I'm through. I'm through. But with God, guys, we're greater than our giants. And that's what we have to remember. We're greater than the mountains that are before us. Okay, that's what we must understand. And so think about this, guys. I want to give you this, this other thought because it, it's on the inside of me right now. And i got to get it out of me. You know, we got to be so careful. So careful of only judging our adversaries or, or judging our enemies and making them think that they're small or we looking at them small. Not like, like looking at them like they don't have the power that they do. And I'm going to give you this thought process. And what I simply mean by this. Guys, have you ever thought about some time how we misjudge how strong of a challenge people are in our lives? Okay, sometimes, you know, sometimes people, you know, people to, to come against you, you know, think about it. If you're strong, I wouldn't think about a kid coming against me. Okay, I, I'm huge. I, I mean, I'm strong as I can be. So some little teenager boy come against me, he might live a little late, but he can't deal with me. 
It's no way in the world for somebody to come and actually deal with me from a physical standpoint. Okay, you, you got to have you got to be made of something. Because other than that, you wouldn't be a true enemy for you. You should be somebody I was flat around, right? And so when God is allowing certain things to come after you, for you to grow stronger, you got to be tested. So your enemies will come at you stronger, be stronger and stronger as you go. Why are your enemies stronger and stronger as you go? Because, see, the small things, the things that you defeated 15, 20 years ago, they're not big enemies for you no more. Matter of fact, you slap them, you just get out the way, get out the way. Yeah, whatever. I don't even think about that no more. But the big, the big things, the things you haven't faced yet, those things are your greater enemies. Why? Because you don't know that you can actually overcome them yet. You haven't been in that fight. You haven't been in that struggle yet, right? And so when God allows that struggle, that fight to come to you, come your way, it's somehow you have to focus. You have to focus, okay, when something's coming after you. You have to focus when your enemy's on your butt, right? And when you start to focus and realize, okay, what do I have in place, okay, to overcome the very thing that's coming after me? That's when you're also going to realize, I can only do this with you, Lord. Because some of your enemies that you're going to come across, even in this lifetime, okay, even in this world, some of the things, some of the attacks that's going to be coming after you, but there's no way you can take it home by yourself, right? And so don't just think from a, a person standpoint, God. Think of some of the, the tactics people have used against you at work, okay, at home, and in, in your family, your personal life. Some of the things that have come your way that you did not expect. Some of the things that showed up at your doorstep that you, and you didn't know what it was, but you say it's here. Can you open your door? You, you, you thought you were looking for a piece of mail. You got something delivered to you, all right. You know, something that you did not expect, something that you did not want, something that you did not sign up for, but God is saying, it's here. So what you going to do? Are you going to sit there and cower, go into the corner and cry? Or are you going to stand like the man or woman I created you to be and know that I'm here with you and we're going to fight against this very thing that's before you? And see, if we can remember to do that, if we could remember to be strong in, 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 in the times of peril, in, in the times of disaster, in, in the times when you think like you're drowning, you feel like you're drowning, you know, like, Lord, I, I, I'm looking to the left, and I'm looking to the right, and it was bad for me, mighty God. You know, you know and how can, what, what's going on here, Lord? So I say, stay focused on me. Stay focused on me. Stay with me. You know, stay in the right mindset. You know, stay, stay in, in, in the right thought process and know that I'm here because I'm not, I'm not going to leave you. That's what the promise is. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Let's walk down a little bit, guys. Let us, and give me this, I, I got to find this because I think this is an awesome, awesome piece of scripture. And I asked you guys to look it up last week or take it home with you and, and just take note of it. So let's get ready to pick up. Let's pick up at 2 Kings once again. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 12. Let me set you up. This kingdom is trying to go to war with Israel. Okay, they, they try, they're trying to get in Israel and do some damage to it, right? And so this king is, is, is sending folks a certain way, but Israel's outflanking them. And the reason that in, in Israel's outflanking them is because they have Elijah. Elijah is telling Israel what maneuvers to make. And this is important because now this king is picking up with a discussion with some of his servants. So this is where 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 12 picks up. And, it says, and one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet who was in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Now think about this for a moment. So the king of this enemy nation trying to come against Israel, okay, the Israel has this prophet, and, and this prophet, is, and this servant is telling, you know, the king about this prophet. He says, Elijah's telling you, tell, telling Israel what you're saying in your bedroom. There's no way you can hide from Elijah who has the power of God on the inside of him, who God is working with right now. That's what this, this servant is telling him. Okay, and the king said, go and see where he is that I may sin and seize him. Okay, it was told to him, okay, behold, he is in Dothan. So the king sent their horses and chariots and a great army. And they came by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the, of the man of God, so this is, Eli, I'm sorry, Elijah's servant. So when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, master, what shall we do? Alas, alas, master. See, this, this servant right now is perplexed. This, this, this servant is thinking right now, hey, it's, it's about to go down, Elijah. It's just me and you. And there's an army outside the, our, our window, so to speak. You know, it, it's something. Because, see, I don't matter how many people the enemy show up with, you got to remember there's always more with us than with them. Okay, there's always the greater power with us than with them. See, when David went out to fight Goliath, it's something because he called him you uncircumcised Philistine. That was one of the first things he said to him. Why did he call him, you uncircumcised Philistine? Because he knew Goliath had, did not have the covering of God. When he said uncircumcised, that simply means at that time, guys, God is not your covering. 
Because the people of God in the Old Testament, right, the covering of him or how they reflected it or they um, showed it was in circumcision. So that's why the Israelites were circumcised. Correct? And, because, and so since they were circumcised, they had the covering of God. So that was how they showed it then. And I want you guys to understand this right now. Goliath was not covered. Okay? He, he was not circumcised. That's why he said you uncircumcised Philistine. Okay, you don't have the power of God. You don't have the covering of God. God is not for you, but God is for me. So when David is saying this to them, he, he's pronouncing, okay, you don't have the power in you to defeat me. I may look like a boy on the outside of you, but I want you to understand, I'm the true giant here. Okay, I'm the overcomer. You just can't see it yet, but you're going to realize it when I cut your head off. That's why David was talking like he was talking. If we can get that on the inside of us, family, with some of the things that we're going through right now, some of the issues, some of, some of the people, or, you know, circumstances coming our way, no, I, greater is he who is in me. Amen? Then he was in the world. So you best believe just because you show up with your hundreds or your thousands, you must understand my God is on my side. And that's exactly what's getting ready to happen. At last, Master, what shall we do? Then Elisha said, do not be afraid. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So calm. So calm. I, I can almost, you know, I can almost, I don't even know what Elijah looked like, but I can almost picture it in my mind right now. You know, those who are with us are more than with those who are with him. Then Elijah prayed and said, Oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. Isn't this something? How the man of God, you know, how people who truly know God, they already know on the inside of them. Okay, there's more with us than with them. Matter of fact, he's trying to, Elijah, with all he's doing right now is he wants his servant to see the power of God. He wants his servant to see the provision that God has sent already to protect us. And see, that's what, this is so great for us to understand this. See, some of us, we already know it on the inside, so we don't have to see it by sight, right? So not by sight, so to speak, right? But by faith. And because we know by faith, God is with us, and there's more here to protect us. Okay, we don't have to worry about what's going on with, uh, around us. The problem is we, we feel sometimes the breath of the enemy. And what I mean by the breath of the enemy, we, we, we feel the things that he's doing to us. You know, we, we, sometimes we have to change the way we live. We, we may have to change because of the circumstances going on in our body. You know, we, we can feel his breath. But the Lord says, don't be afraid of the enemy's breath, so to speak, okay? I, there is more with us than with them. Just because you can see them, just because you've laid eyes on the army of the enemy, you must also understand, okay, there's more with us than with them. And so when Elijah's praying, Okay, it's right here. Open up his eyes so he may see. So the Lord opened up the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots and fire all around Elijah. Wait a minute. All around Elijah was an army of angels. You know in our Bible, one angel wipes out over 150-something thousand people. One angel. One angel. Can you imagine what an army of angels can do? Okay, I mean, and he just relented because the Lord told him to stop. I'm just giving you that thought process because I'm sure that one angel could have wiped the floor with everything there. Okay, think about that for a moment. If, if they have all these power, okay, all this power God has bestowed upon them. And so when they are sent here, when they are sent to protect us, oh my God, God. Oh, oh I, I can't even imagine. I can't even fathom. I, I love when I'm in this mindset right now. I, I love the, you know, when, when I feel the strength of the Lord. I love when I remember the, the greatness of God. Because, see, when I remember the strength and the greatness of God, I don't ever worry really worried about being defeated because I, I know who's with me. The problem I have, the problem I have on the inside of me, and it's too many times, and I hate to admit it, is I forget the power and the majesty and the greatness of God. When I forget his power, when I forget his majesty, when, when I forget his greatness, I forget the abilities my Lord and Savior has. And so when I forget the ability my God has, what tends to happen, I think his arm is short now, and he cannot save me. But scripture tells, tells us, right, it's the Lord, it's the Lord, you question that, is the Lord's arm so short that it cannot save? The Lord said, oh, who are you, look at that, who are you believing in? Who are you trusting in? If I can create angels to do that right there, what do you think I can do? Ah, uh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes, Lord. Get, let's get excited. Some of you guys need to just praise God in your bed right now. Some of you guys need to get out of that sick bed right now. Some of you guys need to get out of that depressed bed right now. Some of you guys need to, to get up. You know, and understand joy is here. 
Because God is here. You have the power to overcome what you're going through. Yes, you can feel the enemy breathing on your neck, but God is here to put that separation between you and the enemy. Okay, he's already done it because you've already been done, okay, and he did not do it. So understand it's time for us now to reach out in power. Can you confess things in power, and, you know, and continue to pray, continue to trust in our Lord, continue to understand that he puts this, this, this army between you and your enemy. Once again, so even though you can see them, you should not be scared of them. Amen? Amen, amen. Guys, I, like Elijah's servant, too many of us are so intimidated based on what we see. But as scripture tells us, we walk by faith and not by sight for a reason. We have to. Some of us have been you're going through so much and we're holding on more to the fears. We're giving more weight to the fears than we are giving to our faith. And we can't do it that way. we got to put so much faith and trust in our Lord despite the things that we see, despite the things that we feel. Because sometimes, God's works, once again, we can feel the enemy breathing down our neck. And that may show up, like I say, once again, and hurting our body, you know, hurting our relations, you know, whatever it may be. But we feel it and we, we see it. But that's when our faith is the must be of utmost importance. Because when we understand who truly for us, ask the Lord to open up your eyes. Lord, even, even though I'm going through all this hardship right now, open up my eyes so that may, I may see. Remind me, mighty God, of who you are. Okay, help me. Help my faith. Like, like, like Jay Iris concerning his daughter. You know, Jesus says, you know, if the girl, the girl had passed away. Jesus says, looked at him and says, do not fear. Just believe. Just believe. Okay, I know you think this is a dead situation because they've already come and told you your daughter has died, but I need you just to believe. I need you just to have a little bit of faith. Give me a little bit of faith where I can work with, right? And scripture tells us, Jesus, in, in, I think it's the book of Mark, I think it's chapter uh, uh, chapter 6, which says Jesus couldn't go in many towns in his whole town, in, in his hometown, to do many miracles. And the reason he couldn't do many miracles is because of their unbelief. But Jesus needs somebody there just, just, just an ounce of faith. Just, just a mustard seed of faith. Because if I got somebody with just a mustard seed of faith, and just a little bit of faith, they've given me something, something to work with. They've given me a place in which I can step in and work my mighty works. And see, when we get that thought process about ourselves, you know, don't be like that unbeliever. Don't be like that person that can have no faith. Give the Lord something to work with. And when you give him something to work with, okay, it said he can do many miracles there, but he did some. He did some, so you might need to be that one that he did some with, right? So you can't worry about what happened to everybody else. You can't worry about their circumstances and how it ended. What you must do is you must believe. You must hold on to what you know. You must trust, okay, and, and seek God for the outcome that you want. That's all you can do anyway. Okay, don't, we can't cower every moment of every day. Okay, God didn't put us to be a coward. He put us here, okay, to live. And to live in the fullness of life. So we can't run from that enemy that is greater than us. We understand that he's greater than us naturally, but we have God with us. So you don't have to even judge me naturally anymore. Because I have the Lord in me and I am him in him. Okay, I have now supernatural powers. That's what I'm trying to say to you right now. See, once again, I'm going back to that same statement. David was a giant there. See, Goliath was a fake giant. Goliath was a giant that he looked like a giant, but David was the giant. See, we have to be that giant. Even though the mountains look big, even though these giants before me look big, I'm the giant because of who's with me. Because of who's with me. Amen? Amen, amen. Family, I'm not much sure how much further I want to go today. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to end it right there, but I'm going to give you this last thought process. I, My little sister, when we were young, there's one younger than me, uh, my little sister Nicole, and uh, when we were young, it, it was something how my little sister would be getting in all this trouble. My little sister, she was little too. I mean, just the smallest thing, boy, but that mouth be going, boy, and, and people be after Nicole, and, and Nicole just be talking, talking, talking. You know, and it was something, because as soon as Nicole gets to talking, he ain't going to do nothing to me. You know who my brother is? I Don't make me get my brother. And I, guys, at first, I didn't used, used to think she used to do this, and this is just a true story, but she, man, I used to catch this girl doing this so much, and I'll think to myself, Nick, what are you doing, Nicole? Okay, stop getting me into these little things where I got to go fighting to defend you. But it's something when we look at it from a faith perspective. My little sister, literally, I mean, this girl was like 85 pounds in high school. Give you an idea how small she was at first. And I'm giving you this thought process because she be talking all this crap. And it was something because all this crap she be talking to these people. And they would not touch her because of who her big brother was. And it was something when I would have to walk over. 
you know, and calm things down and how everybody would just kind of shut their mouths when I showed up. Okay, I don't know the way in which I was looking because I, I never had to do anything in high school regarding my little sister, literally. Never I did. I would just walk over, okay, and the things and the people that were against her, they seemed, everybody just seemed to be quiet and kind of walk away. And I thought about that later on. You know, isn't it something how when the Lord shows up? He's always been there, but when he makes his appearance, did you guys get it? He's always with you, but then he makes an appearance. And when he makes that appearance, the enemy shuts down. The enemy has to walk away, go back the other way. Why? Because he's no match, and he knows it. Because he's part of the created. And because he's part of the created, he can't deal with the creator. Because the creator is the most all-powerful. All, all the creator is, is the one that has all the things he needs to very much destroy the very things that are created. And because Satan knows he's no match for the creator, for our God, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for God the Holy Spirit, he walks away when we resist him. So the key is for us to resist the devil, not to be scared of him. Okay, to stand in the place like we need to stand in the place with God. Okay, and then he what, what moves away and waits for the opportune time. Everything that dream showed me, guys, every, everything that God allowed me to see there that day is, is the way I must move forward. Okay, I'm going to keep moving forward. Okay, I know the enemy's behind me, and I know he's trying to get closer to me, but that's okay. Because God's going to put separation between me and him. Okay, if the Lord does this for one of us, he'll do it for all of us. Because the Lord says in his word, I am not a respecter of persons. The Lord is a respecter of faith. So we must keep trusting in him, keep, keep putting our faith in him, and we're going to move forward with him. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Just thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, mighty God, that you continue, continually build us up. Thank you, mighty God, for giving us your, your understanding, mighty God, giving us your wisdom, because this is a, these are the things that we must have on the inside of us, mighty God, to move forward with you. Help us with our trust. Help us with our faith, mighty God. Help us to all be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the way you love us, the way you keep us, the way you heal us, the way you put distance between us and our enemies. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you've done. Thank you, for Lord, for the sacrifice. Thank you, mighty God, that you brought us, Lord, that you brought us to the Father. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Under the power of God, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray, we say amen, amen, amen. If you are the sound of my voice this morning and you want to know Jesus Christ for the very first time, Romans 10, 9 simply states that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. So if that's you this morning, you want to meet Jesus for the very first time, simply declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And if that's you this morning, you now belong to the kingdom of God. That's the first step. But there's a powerful second step that you must take. Okay, it's the second step is your transformation to become a disciple of Christ. Okay, for you to transform, you have to pick up the Word of God and start reading it, start taking it in. To get with a good Bible-based church so the people, the people there can help you to become the person that you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. If you can't find nobody in the area in which you're in, you can always find us at harvestvillage.org. Okay, you can email us at admin at harvestvillage.org. And that should be on the bottom of your screen, admin at harvestvillage.org. Amen? Amen. For any reason you may have stepped away from the Lord, Okay, you're looking to come back. First John 1, 9, so he says the Lord is faithful to forgive all those who ask for forgiveness. So repent. Turn away from what you're doing and turn back towards God. Ask for forgiveness. The Lord is ready to put you back in your rightful position. Amen. Also get with a good Bible-based church as they continue to help you to find the Lord okay, and walk in his truthfulness. Well, family, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you for joining me this morning. Okay, thank you for listening to the word. Thank you for studying the word. And have a blessed day, family. Bye now.